Good morning, One Hope. It's March 26, 2024. Our passage for today is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 to 8, John chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Jesus in Deuteronomy is the title of the Passion Week morning podcast. And this is the second of the six sermons. And today's sermon is entitled, Keep the Command of the Lord. Let's start with the structure of this book once again. Deuteronomy is the final sermon of Moses given to the next generation of Israelites who are about to enter the promised land. And it's composed of three sermons. And in the first sermon, Moses looks back at their wilderness journey. And there he points out two things. Reason for their failure, which was their disobedience. And key to their success going forward. And the answer he gives is obedience. And in this final chapter of the first sermon, in chapter 4 of Deuteronomy, Moses calls for obedience, but in doing so, he doesn't just call for it, but gives reasons as to why he calls them to obedience. Verse 1, follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land, of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestor, is giving you. You see, the first reason so that you may live. It's for you. It's not for me, God says, first and foremost, but it is for you, friends. When God tells us to do something, calls us to obedience, we think that he's asking us to make some sort of great sacrifice for God's benefit. But it's actually for us, first and foremost. It's for you, so that you may go and live And it also says, you may go and take possession of the land. What this shows us is that the land will be yours, but you have to take possession of it. The word is an active verb. Obedience is a means through which we receive God's blessing. It's active receiving, not a passive waiting where we just wait for something to drop from heaven. We think that sometimes blessings of God just come just if we just wait and do nothing. But the blessing of God comes when we go and in obedience take possession of the land that he wants to give to us. There's a second reason, verse 5. See, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me so that you may follow them in the land you are entering. Do it in the land you are entering. Yes, you should keep my commandments in the wilderness too, but the focus I have is for you to go into the promised land and there you follow my law and obey me. Why? Verse 6, observe them so that the nations who hear about all these decrees will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people so that the people of God might show show God and his law to these Gentile nations in the promised land you know when you purchase a new condo that's being built you decide first by going and seeing the show home showcase home that is showcased you know you they build that first right And God's people and the church of God is like that. Church, over the years, in history, has made a mistake in equating the church itself as being the kingdom of God. But church is not the kingdom itself. Church is a sign of God's kingdom. Church is a community of God that showcases what God's kingdom looks like. And that's exactly what God is saying here to the people of God. You go in and through your obedience, showcase me and my kingdom. That's the reason. There's a third reason. Let's go all the way down to verse 37. Because he loved your ancestors and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength. 
He loved you. And then in verse 40, he says, keep his decrees and commands. Verse 40, which I am giving you today. And that's the reason. God says, keep them because he loved you. So in your love, obey him. We looked at John chapters 13 to 17 yesterday, and we returned to it once again. This is the final sermon of Jesus also given to the disciples before he went to the cross. And between Deuteronomy, Moses' final sermon, and John chapter 13 to 17, Jesus' final sermon, there are similarities that overlap. But Jesus, in these final words to the disciple, he also adds few words to the same call that he gives to the disciples for obedience. John chapter 15, verse 5. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. He uses these two new words, remain, fruit. You will bear fruit if you remain in me. And it's as if Jesus is saying, I agree with Moses, should obey God's command. But let me tell you how you're going to do it. I'm going to take it a step further because he's Jesus. He says, I'm going to take it a step further, and this is how you obey. This is means by which you obey. You remain in me, and if you do, you'll bear fruit. But then he also talks about love as well, that it is about love, our obedience. So verse 9, verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Same word, love is used. It's about loving God so you obey him. But John goes, and Jesus here in John, goes a step further by talking about joy. Through your obedience, my joy, your joy become one, and that joy becomes complete. So here's our takeaway that I want to share with you today. Obey with joy. Wherever you are called by God to serve Him and to obey, remember, this is about joy. And this is for joy. And this is with joy that we do it. And when we obey him, the result and the fruit and the blessing that comes is joy. At One Hope, as your lead pastor, one thing I emphasize over and over again is our personal relationship with God. Our fellowship with him. You walk down that path of this intimate, personal fellowship and relationship with God, the end point is obedience. And when you get there and you walk into obedience, you experience joy that you can only experience when you actually obey Him. There's a special joy that exists for those who obey Him. It's different joy. It's a joy that's different from all the other joys of being a Christian. Something special about obeying Him and experiencing that joy that is found in the act of obedience that we give unto Him. It's like this. I left home when I was at the age of 23. And it's almost now getting close to 30 years since I left home. And since then, I have not lived with my parents. But it's really interesting because lately, I find myself doing the same things that my father does and did. And I guess this is really the power of genes. But then there's also another thing that I'm noticing. I am starting to remember the words that he had spoken, things he taught me. When he said those things to me at that time, it came into one year and went out the other. But now I'm starting to remember it and I'm starting to think about it I'm actually doing some of the things that he had said to me. But what's interesting is that I haven't lived in the same home and house with him for almost 30 years now. But then, in many ways, I am closer 
and I feel closer to him than I ever did when I lived with him in the same house. It's this kind of intimacy that Jesus is talking about. Jesus knew that Father loved him, and he also loved him, and to love the Father, he obeyed the Father by going to the cross, and the Father's joy and Jesus' joy became complete, and they became one, even more so through that act of obedience. That's why God calls us to obedience. So friends, obey with joy so that you will experience true life. Obey with joy so that you'll be a show home and showcase for the people in the world. Obey with joy so that your joy with God and in God may be complete. In Jesus' name, amen.